Hey everyone, this is Nick, and while we have some incredible applications on Linux, sometimes, depending on your use case, you just need to run a piece of software that's been made exclusively for Windows and isn't available on Linux. For these use cases, we have Wine, which is a compatibility layer to run Windows software on Linux. It's not an emulator, it's basically a re-implementation of Windows inside of Linux. Problem is, running things with Wine manually can be quite the hassle, especially if you need to run multiple apps with different preferences, different Windows versions, different libraries. For that, we had Play on Linux, but I don't think it's maintained anymore from what I could find. Fortunately, we now have Bottles, which is an amazing alternative with a graphical user interface that lets you just run your Windows programs on Linux. So let's talk about it, right after I tell you everything about today's sponsor, which will let you monitor and control your network connection. This video is sponsored by Safing. They make the Portmaster, which is an amazing tool that lets you control and monitor your internet connection with a simple graphical user interface. You get block lists, you get profiles depending on your current connection, and you can even tweak settings per app. It's also completely open source and free. Safing also makes the SPN or Safing Privacy Network. It's a powerful VPN alternative which spreads your connections across the globe instead of rerouting all your connections to only one server. With the SPN, you can be everywhere at once and no website can build a profile from your visits and your location. Of course, you also get all the benefits from a traditional VPN. If that's something you'd like to try, and if you want to help support Safing's open source work, you can subscribe to the SPN right now or download the Portmaster by heading in the link in the description below. Okay, let's begin with a quick refresher course on Wine. Wine stands for Wine is not an emulator, which means it's one of these recursive acronyms that include the acronym itself in the full length name, which is a weird thing that Linux developers sometimes do. Wine is an almost complete re-implementation of multiple Windows APIs in a format that Linux can understand. When a Windows program runs with Wine, it talks to it like it would talk to Windows, and Wine just grabs these calls and tells your Linux system to execute something it can understand. So you're not running a virtual machine or emulating the system. You have a whole Windows environment. Except it's not developed by Microsoft and you don't need a copy of Windows to use it. Wine creates a fake C drive inside your home directory in the .wine hidden folder and it stores everything there. The documents, pictures, desktop or videos folder from the fake C drive are also mapped to your regular folders inside of your Linux environment. So you don't need to hunt for various files, they are where you expect them to be. Which can also create some clutter in your main documents folder in your slash home directory on Linux because Windows apps aren't generally very respectful of where they put their stuff or where it's supposed to be. Which means that you will probably get a my games folder at some point or various things, various folders and files that are just coming from Windows apps inside of your Linux environment. Wine can even create multiple fake C drives to install apps in different locations. And these are called prefixes. Handling prefixes in Wine can be a boring task and Bottles, the app we're talking about today, makes that a lot easier. Wine also has a companion tool called Wine Tricks that lets you install multiple Windows system components that Wine can't redistribute legally, but that you can install yourself without any problems, like Microsoft Fonts, the .NET runtime, DirectX and more. Do note that Wine does not protect you from viruses, Ransomware and other weird malware can still access your fake C drive and sometimes even the regular folders in your slash home directory on Linux. So don't use it to try some weird stuff you downloaded off the internet because it's still not safe. And that's about it. Wine is a fantastic tool, a fantastic program. And it's also the base for Proton, which you might know if you run Windows games on Linux directly from Steam in just one click. The problem is, handling it manually can be a chore, especially if you need multiple prefixes for various apps to handle different Windows versions, different sets of libraries. And that's where Bottles, the app that we're talking about, comes in. Bottles is a graphical user interface that sits on top of Wine. It lets you handle each program in its own bottle. A bottle being a Wine prefix with different rules, different dependencies, different libraries and settings. So each app can run optimally without risking breaking the other ones you're using. 
It also lets you use Proton to run games that aren't available on Steam, for example, or if you have boxed copies of various games. Among other features, it also has automated installers for a few applications. It lets you run .exe and .msi executables in the bottle of your choice. It lets you manage multiple versions of Wine or Proton to use the right one for each app. It has gaming performance enhancements. It lets you install DXVK and VKD3D, which are the compatibility layers needed to run DirectX games on Linux, and a lot more. In the preferences, you can set a custom path for your bottles. For example, to place them on another hard drive or another partition that the one your user directory is. You can download new versions of Wine, of the Lutris enhanced version of Wine, of Proton, or of other more obscure distributions of Wine. And you can also enable Proton prefixes, which are still an experimental feature, but they let you use Proton to run things, as it might make games work better than the default Wine. Basically, Bottles is like Lutris, but it's not made specifically for games. It has less automated installer scripts, but it also works a lot better for regular programs. The first step to install anything will be to create a bottle to run the application in. The plus button lets you do that and you'll get a nice graphical window to let you pick between a gaming focused bottle, which will have a lot of tweaks specifically for running games, an applications bottle with improvements for running desktop apps, or a custom one that has no specific tweaks so you can experiment yourself. Just select the appropriate bottle type, enter its name, and click the Create button that appeared in the top right corner. Bottles is now going to create automatically the wine prefix that you need, set up the Windows version, install the required DLLs and libraries that you might need. Basically, it handles everything automatically and you have to worry about nothing. Super simple. Once the bottle is created, you can either straight up select an executable you would have downloaded yourself and run it, or you can go into more detail. You get a useful help button to troubleshoot common issues. You can back up the bottle, delete it, stop all running processes in case something crashed, or simply reboot or shut the bottle down. These actions are faked, but some programs will need them to have access to registry entries they created or to reload a DLL, for example. You also get a host of utilities, like accessing the fake C drive for that bottle, where everything will be stored. You can edit the Windows registry for that bottle specifically. You can open a task manager, configure Wine itself, uninstall programs, or, of course, run an executable. Let's try that first and pick a random program, for example, WinRAR, because why use something that you have to pay for, like WinZip? Oh, wait, no. Just click that fat blue button, pick your .exe or .msi file, and open it. And you're done! You get the familiar Windows installer screens, and once that's done, your program is installed and can run like any other. Of course, Wine isn't perfect, and while some programs will run perfectly, some won't or will require manual tweaks. And that's why we have automated installers. For now, Bottles only has a few that are mostly gaming related. But that list can expand, as anyone can contribute one of these. So I would be surprised if we didn't see a lot of installers appearing pretty soon, especially for the most used Windows apps. These installers all have a rating, from Platinum to Bronze, letting you know how well the program will run, just like what you could find on ProtonDB. Platinum means it should run exactly as on Windows, and Bronze means that it will run, but expect a few glitches here and there or some performance problems. Just click on the download button to start installing the program you want and to configure the bottle automatically, so you don't have any manual work to do. Once your installer is done, you can just run the app from the main page of the bottle or from the Programs tab. Of course, you can also uninstall these programs if you find you don't need them anymore, right from the programs list. It's all super easy, and I personally hope that we will have a lot more business-focused installers for apps that aren't gaming-related, maybe based on the work that Crossover is doing or on previous Play on Linux scripts. Now, if your favorite program doesn't have an automatic installer script yet, and it's likely to be the case for now, you can of course configure your own bottle manually. Just create a custom bottle and head over to the details page. Here you will find a ton of stuff you can configure or install. The dependencies tab lets you get a ton of libraries that various apps might need, like fonts, DirectX related stuff, various runtimes like .NET, some codecs, NVIDIA physics, and more. Don't go installing all of these at once though, you will need to only get what's necessary. We'll see how to go about that in a minute. In the Preferences tab, you can enable or disable the use of plenty of gaming-focused libraries, 
like DXVK, VKD3D, and even DLSS or FSR to enable better performance at higher resolutions, even if the games don't support it natively. You can also change the version of Wine or DXVK you want to use, the Windows version that's used, or override some DLLs to use native Windows ones that you manually copied to your fake C drive, instead of using the ones Wine is providing. You can even tell the application to run in a virtual desktop with a limited resolution. You can force the program to take focus, or set a custom DPI scaling to handle virtually any edge case you might encounter. Bottles also lets you enable game mode, which gives a 2 to 10% performance boost to games and applications if it's installed on your system, by making the CPU prioritize the task in the foreground. And finally, once your app works well in your bottle, but you would like to try and squeeze more performance out of it by changing some configs, you can create safe states of each bottle. So if you mess something up, you can just go back to the state where everything worked and pick up from that. Now you might want to ask, why is it so complicated? And the answer is because Windows is messy. Wine basically has to re-implement versions of Windows that work differently from Windows XP to Windows 11, and they can't legally ship some of the DLLs and libraries that Windows use, so you have to install them manually through the Dependencies tab. It's all a big mess, and it's actually quite incredible that Wine is already as capable as it is. But how can you know what you need to change to make sure a program runs? Well, you have Wine App DB, which is the equivalent of Proton DB, but for any Windows program, not just Steam games. This huge database has results and the various configurations needed for a lot of programs, although it can be quite out of date and the website isn't very legible. Just searching for the name of the program in your favorite search engine, plus adding Wine and Linux as the search terms, might also net you some good results with the various things you need to add. Just head over to the Dependencies tab and install what's needed, head over to the Registry Editor and add the keys that are needed, and you'll be good to go. It can be a hit or miss process, and while some apps will work wonderfully well, some others just will never run with the current Wine versions, which is why automated installer scripts are so important, because they completely streamline that whole install process and let you just focus on installing the app and not looking it up online. For now though, you might have to resort to using Bottle's Dependencies tab or Registry Editor to add the things that are needed for the app to actually work. So Bottles is a fantastic first step to get more Windows programs on Linux. Wine has always been a pretty amazing project, but all that manual configuration and trial and error process just doesn't scream user-friendly or reliable. And that's why having nice graphical user interfaces like Bottles is so important. And of course, while Wine and Proton have gone a very, very long way since I first used them in 2006, they are still not perfect, and while the basic Win32 apps will generally run fine without any hiccups, the most advanced ones that implement their own UI libraries might be more complex, like for example Microsoft Office or Adobe Photoshop. Still, for specific programs you can't find an alternative for on Linux, Wine and Bottles is just what you need. It's also wonderful for all these game launchers like the EA app, Ubisoft Connect or the Epic Game Store, although these are starting to be integrated inside of Lutris as well. Bottles is available as a flat pack, but it's also on the AUR or as a native package for Fedora, OpenSUSE, MX Linux or NixOS, and probably a lot more unofficial packages. Being on Flathub, it also means that you can install it on the Steam Deck and install those pesky game launchers, add them as a non-Steam game and run them from the Steam Deck's game mode for all those games that you don't own on Steam. What you could own though is a nice Linux laptop or desktop thanks to today's sponsor, Slimbook. These guys are based in Valencia, Spain. They make Linux laptops, Linux desktops for all price points, basically all use cases, and they're really, really cool devices. They ship worldwide, they have almost all keyboard layouts, and I can only recommend them. I use their laptop, the Slimbook Pro X14. I use their desktop, the Slimbook Chimera. I use their keyboard, the Slimbook RGB keyboard, which is a pseudo mechanical one, which is really cool as well. And yeah, I can basically only tell you to go check out their stuff. Click on the link in the description below, look it up, and maybe you'll find something that you want to use with Linux pre-installed out of the box. So thanks everyone for watching the video, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications, to write a comment, and if you didn't like it, you can also dislike and tell me why in the comments as well. If you want to help me make more of these videos, you can also join my Patreon subscribers or become a YouTube member. 
both get access to the weekly Patreon cast on Mondays, and you also get to vote on the next topics I'll cover. So thanks everyone for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!